sunshine, see the land of the Lord. <laughs> Interesting facts about famous people. Top 10 Western Movies of the 1970s There was a revival of the Westerns in the 1970s. They depicted America at the turn of the century, a time when the US was finding its feet. Lawlessness reigned in the remote outlands, deserts and remote towns. Greed, survival, justice and freedom were the motivators in the late 1800s. Traditional Westerns used the constructs of lawful, lawless, indigenous and anti-hero characters for the basis of their stories. The industry went through a metamorphosis since the days of Jimmy Stewart, John Wayne, Gary Cooper and other greats. Subgenres like acid westerns, counterculture and anti-capitalist sensibilities with an emphasis on the savagery and the unpredictable nature of the frontier. Space westerns like Outland, A High Noon in Space, possibly the most popular subgenre use science fiction trappings to extend the propagation of society in every corner of the universe. The 70s were a decade with some of the most experimental westerns that explored the undying possibilities of the west from new vantage points. If you like this video, take a look at my channel for many more. The link is in the description. Apologies for any mispronunciation of names. The Outlaw, Josie Wales is a 1976 American revisionist Western film, set during and after the American Civil War, directed and starred Clint Eastwood, with Chief Dan George, Sandra Locke, Sam Bottoms, and Geraldine Keems. The story of Josie Wales, a Missouri farmer whose family is murdered by Union militants during the Civil War, driven by revenge, Wales joins a Confederate guerrilla band and makes a name for himself as a feared fighter. After the war, all the fighters in Wales' group, except for him, surrendered to Union soldiers, but they end up being massacred. Wales is pursued by bounty hunters and Union soldiers as he tries to make a new life for himself. Josie Wales was betrayed by Michael Parks in the film's 1986 sequel, The Return of Josie Wales. His wife, Laura Lee, was played by Mary Ann Averett in the sequel. Cabe and Mrs. Miller is a 1971 American revisionist western starring Warren Beatty and Julie Christie, filmed in British Columbia, Canada in the fall and winter of 1970, receiving critical acclaim in the years since its release, earning an Oscar nomination for Christie in the Best Actress category, deemed the eighth greatest western of all time by the American Film Institute in its AFI Top 10 list in 2008. The Ballad of Cable Hogue, 1970. Jason Robards is the old prospector, Cable Hogue, in this western. He turns a desert watering hole into an enterprise in honour of the wild west of the past. Hogue represents the arbitrary selfish side of the wild frontier through humorous antics. The satirical irony of expanding the west through monetary gain shows how greed and desperation make men irreverent, charlatans and cheats. Welcome to modern civilization, where thirst costs you 10 cents a head. Blazing Saddles, 1974. Cleveland Little and Gene Wilder, who also starred in the 1979 western The Frisco Kid with Harrison Ford, makes this western expansion spoof timeless. Little plays a black sheriff, Bart, who is appointed by Attorney General Hedley Lamar. Harvey Corman, as a racist cue to persuade a town to migrate elsewhere to make room for a new railroad. Wilder plays an alcoholic gunslinger, Jim, aka the Waco Kid, who helps Bart defend himself from the town's hostility and the scheming Lamar. Historically daring, the American frontier has never been more of a volatile, tragic comedy than through the lens of blazing saddles. Dirty Little Billy, 1972. Michael J. Pollard plays the notorious outlaw, Billy the Kid, 
The Revisionist Western was also the film debut of Nick Nolte in his uncredited role as the town gang leader. Veering from the grandiose scope of traditional Western fare, Dirty Little Billy focuses on the darker elements of realism through the violent early life of William H. Bonney. Though the actor was twice the age of 17-year-old Billy, the portrayal of him as a victim turned madman is uncompromising and bitter. The real Billy the Kid wasn't big or tough or brave. Daddy. Big Jake, 1971. Daddy. The fame gang of brother bandits terrorise the ranch of Martha McCandles at the Mexico-US border. They ride off with her son. Jacob McCandles well, Jr., you holding him hostage for one million dollars. Texas Rangers and the United back. States Army offer to intervene, oh. but she instead friendly, enlists her estranged husband, Jacob, Big Jake McCandles, John Wayne, to save his son, Sam Little Jake. Paw. Well, it's about time. Hold it a minute, friend. I think there's been a mistake. Have you ever been to Nacogdoches? Nacogdoches? Don't know me. Chisholm, I know I 1970. Loosely based on we the 1878 Lincoln neighbors, County War between territorial to factions be instigated by Billy the Kid, John Wayne plays historical figure John Chisholm, a wealthy cattle here. baron who is caught up in the turf war in the New Mexico Territory. The atmosphere and action are close at hand in this western with a flamboyant display. The theme song, The Ballad of John Chisholm, completes this powerful image of the landowner. Take care of her, Sally. What are you going to do? What I'd have done 45 years ago. Kioma, 1976. Franco Nero, of Django fame, stars as Kiyomo Shannon, a part Indian and part white soldier returning from the American Civil War. He finds his half-brothers have joined gang ruler Caldwell in overrunning his hometown. Kioma, with his father and black friend, George, fight to restore peace in the post-war West. Kioma is a pseudo-Jesus figure, trying to keep the peace while using his Native American prowess and war tactics to overcome his enemies. Kioma was one of the last spaghetti westerns with an engaging character arc and use of cinematography. Red Sun, 1971 is what happens when you team up one of the Magnificent Seven, Charles Bronson, and one of the Seven Samurai, Toshiro Mifun. In a clash of East and West, this Franco-Italian multicultural Western forces a double-crossed bandit to help a samurai exact revenge on his gang leader and steal back the stolen Japanese sword meant as a gift for the President of the United States of America. The film had a positive reception in Japan and played in Tokyo theaters for 35 weeks straight. The Shootist, 1976. George Bernard, J.B. Books, ex-sheriff and gunfighter. A dying breed in the wake of Western expansion with new inventions like the camera and trolley car. The town doctor reveals he has terminal cancer and only has weeks to live. Outlaws from the past catch wind of the last of a kind Shootist and the plan to put Books out of his misery before Books makes his way into the history books. The Shootist was John Wayne's last role a fitting end to his 200 plus film career. Thank you for your time today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I appreciate likes, shares and subscribers. Don't forget to hit the notification button for my new videos. Drop me your comments. Bye for now. See you again soon. Please take time to take a look at my Facebook page for new information.